Hi, Tomas O'Leary here again from Moss Art. If you like our videos, please hit the subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss any future cool building science videos, make sure to hit the bell so you get notified on any future releases. Now, we've got something really, really interesting to show you today. If you're involved in buildings, whether as a designer or a contractor, you've got to really start to understand moisture management. And we've set up a little cool experiment here to show you really how uh, we can understand better the uh, relative humidity and the interaction between relative humidity and temperature. So here goes, right? So it's winter time here, it's January, it's about two degrees outside and the relative humidity is about 90%. That sounds like a lot of vapor, isn't it? But actually, because the air outside is so cold in the winter time, the relative humidity can be very high, but the actual physical amount of water vapor in the air is, is quite low. Now, we want to bring that fresh air into our house, don't we? We want to have nice indoor air quality. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in air into our house, which is 90% relative humidity, all right? And we're going to bring that air. Now, the interesting thing is for every 10 degrees Celsius that you raise the temperature of air, roughly the relative humidity falls by 50%. People don't really appreciate that or know that. So look what we've done now. We've brought the outdoor air into our house. We're heating it up. It's not warm enough yet, but we've heated it up to about 10 degrees Celsius. And look what has happened. The relative humidity has fallen by about 50%. Okay, now we want our houses at 20 degrees Celsius, right? So we're gonna heat up that air a bit more. And look what happens now. It's the same physical amount of water, but now the relative humidity has gone down to around 22.5%, okay? Now, people wouldn't be comfortable with that if you were living in a house where the relative humidity was 22.5%, people would be complaining because it would be too dry, okay? So it's very important. So the first principle we're trying to get across in this video is that we want to ventilate our buildings, absolutely, but we want to ventilate them according to good rules of building physics. We don't want to overly ventilate because if you overly ventilate, you'll end up with very low relative humidity. Okay, that's the first part of this video. Now, the second part is what happens if we run things in reverse? Now, you're in your house, you're taking showers, you're cooking food, you're washing the dog or whatever you're doing, and you're adding a lot of moisture vapor to the house. So I'm going to do that now here by, we have this little coffee pot here. So I'm just going to sort of increase the relative humidity in our house. Normally, we like it around sort of 55 to 60 percent all right so now this is uh, our house and this is the relative humidity inside okay now it's very important that you have a vapor control layer in your building uh, this is and the idea of that is to stop the moisture laden air from migrating out through the enclosure now what happens if you have low surface temperatures in your house well if you have low surface temperatures we know now if we, if we decrease the air temperature, the relative humidity goes up. So if we have surfaces around 12 and a half degrees or so, look what happens. The relative humidity goes up to around 80% and mold will start to grow at 80% relative humidity, okay? It doesn't need physical water droplets. So we've got to be super, super careful that we don't have any surface in our, surfaces in our building which are about 12 and a half degrees or lower. Okay, so that's, we want to avoid that. Now, what if the air leaks out through the envelope and sort of migrates towards the outside? Remember now it's zero degrees outside. Well, what happens is if we cool that air even further, we'll actually get condensation. Okay, in fact, if the air goes below nine and a half degrees, more or less, we'll actually get water vapor condensing. And if that condenses in a timber frame wall or if a timber frame roof, you're gonna have a lot of serious problems, okay? So it's very important that we create a fully enclosed uh, environment, that we have a vapor control air without any breaks, without any tears, because if the air leaks out through the envelope, and decreases in temperature on the way out, this is what's going to happen, and you do not want that to happen in your enclosure. Okay, hopefully that was a really good explanation of moisture management and relative humidity and the interaction with temperature, and we'll see you next time on the Mossar channel.